Welcome back guys to the hobby desk. Today we are making cloaks. So what I want to do is make this guy, this corn space marine, have a cloak. So I'm going to green stuff a cloak on its back and then I'm also going to put a little bit of fur trim around the top of the cloak and work in it with some tools and show you how you can easily manipulate green stuff. Okay, so the first thing we need is, funny enough, some green stuff. Next thing is some greaseproof paper. So good old greaseproof paper, like baking parchment will do, things like that, so it doesn't stick to. And a rolling pin. Yes, I own a rolling pin to get it relatively flat. It doesn't have to be perfect but rolling it out fairly flat is ideal. So the first thing you do is get your green stuff and mix it. So we need equal parts blue to yellow. So I generally separate these as soon as I get them because the bit between where they meet generally leaves a bit of a skin and then you have to cut that out as they've gone off slightly. So I like to keep them in two separate containers, two bags, whatever you like. So there is none of that skin that develops over time. So usual stuff of green stuff. Mix it until, funny enough, it looks green, hence green stuff. Uh, mill putty will do in this situation. Or you could always use milli putt to make a cloak. And it is a lot softer. And I think it's better to work with mill pot, really. Green stuff is one of the most common hobby putties that you get. So I'm going to keep working it, pulling it, stretching it, twisting it until it's completely green and the same colour and consistency throughout. So no hard bits inside, just nice and smooth green stuff and you can always use a bit of water so I do have a bottle here always next to my my airbrush I always put a little bit of water on it not a problem so then it becomes less sticky so you can work it in hand okay when I'm completely happy with this I'm going to roll it into a perfect little ball and then lay it out on the grease proof paper. So I have my little ball of green stuff. And I'm going to apply a little bit of water to the, the paper, the grease, uh, grease proof paper. And a little bit to my rolling pin. So you can use oil or you can use water. I prefer water because if I don't clean the product thoroughly afterwards, removing all the oil, or grease or whatever I'm using then obviously the paint won't take to it correctly so I'm going to roll this out as smooth as I can get it, it doesn't have to be perfect as you can see it would stick to the rolling pin so I need a bit more water like I said lube is good <laughs> lube up your tool um, not being crude, KY jelly Petroleum jelly is a bit thicker than oil, so not like cooking oil and things like that. But, like I said, if I don't clean it correctly, then the paint won't take. So once you roll it out on the rolling pin, you should have something It's roughly the same thickness throughout. And I want a leathery looking cape for this guy. So I don't want it too, too thin. Um, and I do want a few little tear holes and things in it as well. So get a slightly elongated shape and make sure you've got a very, very, very sharp hobby knife because you do not want to tear this as you cut. And I'm going to just cut a small section out here where it's going to go around his shoulders like that. So I'm just trying to remove that as best I can. I 
I don't want to cut into the paper. It's just like that. So it doesn't have to be perfect at the moment because you will use your hobby green stuff tools. Get the rolling pin out of the way. You want the approximate shape of what it's going to be like. So make sure your fingers are nice and moist with whatever you're going to use, be it KY jelly or um, just a bit of water. For me, it's going to be water. I'll remove it. And obviously, if your fingers are wet enough, you shouldn't leave any fingerprints in it. So remove the paper. And you've got to kind of gauge it how much you think you're going to use. So for this, I know that's too much. So I'm going to put it back on my greaseproof paper because I don't want to pick up any foreign objects, any dirt, any grime or anything. So I'm going to make it slightly conical, like wider at the bottom than at the top. Just cut away. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. Once it's on the model, you can work it a lot, lot easier. So just put it to one side. Just like so. And same thing on this side. Just cutting away. My knife obviously isn't wet enough. It's picking up rather than cutting. So I'll put a bit more water on my blade. Like I said, if it was an oil or something like that, it stays on the blade for longer. Obviously, water will run off. But if I don't clean it correctly afterwards, the paint will not stick to oil. So for this particular cloak, it's not going to be perfect. It's going to be a raggedy, torn cloak, leathery. I want it go over his shoulders like so once I get the rough shape so I'm thinking that's probably about the right length because obviously you don't want a cloak taller than longer than the height of the model and that's about right so far so I like to push the thinnest part of the cloak bit I cut out previously at the top between the shoulder pad and the neck piece the gorget so I'm trying to leave as much of the shoulder pad and show as possible so I'm going to try to do the same this side All right drape it over and down into the the bit between the head and the shoulder pad. Put a bit more light on the situation. There we go guys. How's that? So just in there using the side of the blade to roll the green stuff so it looks like it has ripples and the cloak is rolling so no hard edges if I can so the good tool for this is and I've got this from a pound shop but you can get them in a cake shop there's four tools all slightly different I have two here just to show you um, so it's plastic it's very basic, but it's just slightly pokey tools that you can manipulate and things. So I don't want anything with a hard edge. So I've got this one here that's slightly curved. So I can roll the cloak where I want it. So I'm going to keep it off the shoulder pad for me personally a little bit. But you know, each to their own. Remember, keep these nice and moist as well. So moisten your tool. You can tell that my fingers were a little bit dry at some stage because I've got fingerprints there. So okay. 
So I'm relatively happy with that. And I'm going to cut out the section where the backpack goes as well. That's why I've left that particular section quite smooth. But normally I would carry the ripple up, up to the top. So no harsh edges. And if you do get a little section like this, you think the edge is a little bit harsh, try smoothing it with a tool or your finger that's moist to get rid of any extreme edges. I mean, you could always use liquid green stuff when it dries, sand it a little bit with a bit of wet and dry paper, some ultra fine sandpaper. Try to get rid of it as much as you can, but there's nothing like working it while it's still wet. Like so. So that's the basic shape that I want. I've briefly stuck the, uh, the backpack on to show you what I want. And now I'm going to start tearing some holes in it to make it a worn, beaten leather cloak. So Chaos wouldn't have a massively clean cloak, it'd be all torn with holes in it. There's a hole rip there. A hole rip there, like so. Just a few little notches cut out in the bottom as well. Making it look a bit raggedy. So you might want to do that when it sets a bit more. But I'm just going to show you now. Some notches are cut out in it. And for that, you could always use a pair of small scissors. So I'm just going to cut a few little bits out the bottom. Make sure whatever scissors or tools you're using, same things before, a bit of lubrication. And play with it as little or as much as you like. Obviously, whenever you do touch it, make sure your fingers are covered in water at least anyway. And when you've got the cloak how you pretty much want it, obviously it looks really shiny at the moment. Uh, but once you get a primer on there and paint it up, it'll look more like a cloak. So get it as smooth as you like, or if you did want to get a few fingerprint marks on there, it's not the end of the world because it does look a bit more leathery. If it's too smooth, it might look a little bit like PVC instead. So get it how you want. And if you did want to have a fur section on the top, just add, I've got some green stuff here, obviously what's left, the green stuff on the top of the cloak. So I'm gonna make it a bit more supple again by working it. So you've got quite a few hours work time with green stuff as long as you keep it moist. And what I'm going to do is just put it over the first initial bit over there. Get a bit of water on it. Just put it on here. Press on it gently with a tool. So it's nice to set up initially where you want the marks. So I want a bit there, a bit there. And you gotta to think to yourself, do I want a shaggy fur cloak? Do I want a wolf pelt? If it's something with short hair then you want shorter strokes more like dimples like that 
So initially, you're putting the marks where you imagine it goes. And then later on, you make them longer and more defined. So what I'm doing is staggering the holes or the dimples. So if I'm doing one there and one there, then the one above would be in the middle. Do that all over the initial first section. So now you've got your basic marks, you can start elongating them, giving them a bit more irregularity. So I'm gonna start working it in to make it quite a long fur on the pelt. So you're just manipulating it, dragging it, pushing it just very slightly every time. Making it, those dimples, more like layered fur. So that's why you normally start in one direction and layer over the top. So each clump of hair is layered over the top, kind of like slates on a roof. When you put the fur over the shoulders, you know, you've got to have like the biggest chunk of the fur roughly here, not sitting on the top. Kind of loses the uh, the model's face then. So there's no perfect way of doing it. Nature is random, so you pick whatever style you want. So if you wanted tiny dots, that would show more of a um, short-haired coat. Whereas this, I'm leaning towards more of a, a shaggy bear, or like a really furry wolf. Anytime you think it's dragging and sticking too much on the knife, you can hear it there, it's starting to stick a little bit. Once again, add some water. Start manipulating it and pulling it. Kind of want them going towards points as well. It's a bit like that, a bit like that. I'll come back when it's all done. Okay, so I have finished. I've got deeper cuts in some places than others. I've done that on purpose, and bigger Vs with the felt than others. So I, I would imagine this felt isn't, um, yeah, maybe a, a prize, a trophy, but it's not well looked after. It's probably gonna be grimy, so it's not like it's been combed or anything. So it's all rough and ragged. I've done a little bit over there. So the reason my cloak is sticking out quite proudly is because this guy is gonna be sitting on top of a juggernaut. So I have measured and the cloak does sit over the top of the uh, the back end, the, uh, the hind of the beast. So I want the cloak to be slightly raised up in a groove underneath. But yeah, make your cloak as rough as you want. You don't have to have it neat uh, but I've done it slightly billowing and trailing there where it's sitting down. 
so this is my Chaos Lords cloak. So hopefully you guys have picked up some techniques and how to do yours in the future. And remember you don't have to spend hundreds of pounds. Just a nice sharp knife and some cake tools. So you don't have to spend like I said, loads of money on stainless steel tools. Just try some of that. Right, thank you very much for watching guys. Please hit that like button and please subscribe. Hobby safe kids.